Happy New Year, everybody. Dan Ullman here with the first DRF race of the day for 2020, and it might have some Kentucky Derby implications. Race number seven at Aqueduct, a one-turn mile event, is the $150,000 Jerome Stakes for three-year-olds. Let's take a look at this field. The winner of this race will be awarded 10 Kentucky Derby qualifying points. And as you see, our colleague David Aragona, the Naira odds maker, morning line maker, has made the number three Independence Hall the overwhelming one to five chalk and deservedly so on the morning line. You can download free formulator pass performances for this year's Jerome Stakes on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with me. Before we take the field in post position order, I want to throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And usually when the best horse gets the best trip, a la on the lead, that horse is going to be tough to beat. An independence all, the number three, who is a pace pressing winner of the grade three Nashua last time out, is expected to make the front in here. This horse is doubly dangerous now. The number one in here is Prince of Pharaohs going out for trainer Linda Rice. Linda Rice excels with second time maidens. Prince of Pharaohs, well, we put that to the test. Let's see what happened in Prince of Pharaohs' second lifetime start. This horse showed improved speed moving from turf to dirt and sprint to route. And he's just very comfortable on the early lead. This is a nice score with a 73 buyer speed figure. The only cause for pause is that five horses have come back from this race already. And in those five horses next starts, none of them hit the board with the best buyer speed figure being a 59. I don't think Prince of Pharaohs beat much that day. There were four dirt races at Belmont on October the 13th. Three of them were won by horses on the lead. Prince of Pharaohs might have been aided by a bit of a speed bias as well. This is a big step up in class. I like the way this horse won very easily last time out, but it is a big step up in class, and he might be used up in the early portion of this race chasing the favorite, Independence Hall. The number two is Inside Risk, and maybe Inside Risk is dirtied up just a little bit. He won his career debut, albeit in a $50,000 maiden claimer for trainer Todd Pletcher. He was taken out of that race by Tom Morley. Inside Risk is a half-brother to a multiple stakes-placed runner, a solid horse on the Mid-Atlantic circuit named Threes Over Deuces. You could argue that he's already been tested against stakes competition and has been found wanting. If you want to look at it from a different perspective, you can say he's had excuses for his last two races. One in the grade one hopeful where he just caught a sloppy track, and one in the grade three gray stakes at Woodbine where he raced over a, a synthetic surface that he may not have loved. He chased a fast pace in the gray, tired pretty badly. That was a useful race. The runner-up came back to finish third in the Coronation Futurity up at Woodbine with a 70 buyer. Inside risk listed as a first-time gelding for the Jerome. He's going to hope for a fast pace up front and try to rally. Maybe he picks up a piece at a price. Here's the three independent Saul. He really just ticks all the boxes, doesn't he? Two starts, buyer speed figures of 82, and then this 101 buyer performance in the grade three Nashua. Independent Saul took over the lead three furlongs from home, and he gets a little bit drifty in the stretch. You see his ears are up. He seems to be just playing right now. And when he gets hit left-handed by Jose Ortiz right here, he drifts out considerably. Jose, though, keeps him right back to his task, rides him out to the wire, this was a gigantic effort for Independence Hall, a horse that's a half-brother to a grade two place horse named Quality Council, a stakes winner named Francois, and a grade three winner named Black Onyx, who won the spiral stakes on a synthetic surface uh, when he was on the Kentucky Derby Trail a few years ago, expected to make the lead for Michael Trombetta. This horse is very, very dangerous, obviously. The four is Dubai Bobby. Dubai Bobby, second off the Chad Summers claim, moving from turf to dirt. This horse is only raced once previously on the dirt. That was in a maiden race at Saratoga over the summer. He didn't do much that day. The sixth place finisher of that race did come back to win a maiden special with a 60 buyer speed figure. He looked good when winning a $40,000 maiden claimer on the turf was due by Bobby, but lots of questions to ask. Distance, class, surface. We move to the five, Polar Bear Pete, who won his career debut 
over a sloppy track at Belmont for a $75,000 maiden claiming tag. He returned in this race, and now winners of one other than optional claimer. We see him in the red cap, yellow sleeves, and he just can't go with these horses at the end. He finishes third behind a promising horse named Three Technique, and the horse that he finishes directly in front of, the fourth place finisher, that horse came back to win the Pennsylvania Nursery for State Breads at Parks with a 76 buyer speed figure. Polar Bear Pete's going to try to stretch out for the first time here. He has shown a versatile running style in two starts, and he has yet to race on fast going. So he is basically unexposed coming into this race, and maybe we'll see an improved performance. The six is Celtic Striker, and I think that Celtic Striker is going to try to make the lead in here. Not sure he's as fast as the chalk, but stretching out in distance from six furlongs to a mile after showing sprint speed in both starts at Monmouth, and also this horse is going to be fresh. We haven't seen him in a little bit over two months. Let's go back to his win at Monmouth over a sloppy track on October the 27th. He was even money in this race. He took some early pressure. He was simply too good for this field. But like the number one Prince of Pharaohs, this race hasn't come back strong. Six horses have come back to race. None of them hit the board, with the best buyer speed figure being a 41 on the turf. Celtic Striker has speed, going to be tested for class, and perhaps tested in a different way from a pace standpoint. Might be a little bit faster than what he's been used to. Completing the field's the seven, Bourbon Bay. Second choice on the morning lines. Really done a little wrong for trainer Mark Henning. Just missed in his career debut, a well-bet debut. He was bet to favoritism in start number two, and he ran over the field. We're going to watch that race right now from Bourbon Bay, who was out sprinted early over this wet track. And this horse is going to come widest and fastest to run these horses down. Similar situation like a couple of other horses in this race. Uh, four horses have come back from this maiden win against New York Breds. None have hit the board. Best buyer speed figure of a 34 like the way that Bourbon Bay was extending in the stretch, but he's going to have to stretch out from six furlongs to a mile. He has the pedigree to get it. I like this outside post where he could probably work out a decent enough trip tracking the pace. But as we look at my top selection in this race, I just can't go past Independence Hall. I think he's simply going to be too tough for these horses, and he right now is one of the top ten three-year-olds in the country, in my opinion. A win here. He's going to take the next step. Prince of Pharaohs really liked the way he looked visually in that most recent start. The buyer came back decent, just not sure what he beat. I think Prince of Pharaohs, the one, will give a good account of himself. I went 3-1-7, and inside risk, the first time gelding, might be able to get a piece at a price. It's your... New Year's Day race of the day. It's the $150,000 Jerome Stakes featuring the three independents all. The winner of this race will be awarded 10 Kentucky Derby qualifying points as an approximate post time of 3.55 Eastern. Good luck.